Hi, I'm Susie. Welcome to my studio. In this video, I want to share with you a variety of different watercolor palettes to help you figure out what's the best for you. So stick around as we talk about each one. The first one I want to talk about is this Tom Lynch palette. This is a white ceramic palette. It's very heavy. It's got coasters on the bottom so it doesn't scratch the surface. I love it because it has this huge mixing area, but it's so heavy I can't take it with me. If you're working in a studio and you're not taking it anywhere, this is a great, a great palette. This has quite a few wells on it, a place for your brushes. And this area is supposed to be holding brushes. I actually use it to hold more paint. So this is, this is just a, a great all around uh, palette. The one big thing I like about it is because it's made out of ceramic, the watercolor doesn't beat up on the palette. So you get your, your mixing is done a little bit easier. It comes with a lid as well. So if you're done working, you can put the lid on it. It's, it doesn't seal tight, it just rests on top of it, but that gives you a flat surface to put other things on. The next one is this palette. And this one is, a, it's, a, it's a bigger palette. And I thought I, it would be fine to just take with me, um, just even though it's a little bit bigger because it has such great mixing areas. But as you can see, when I open it up, that is broken here. So it's, it's uh, cheaply made, but it, the functionality is awesome. So um, just wanted to point this one out. Make sure that when you choose your palette, you choose something that um, has the durability. This one actually has the three palette areas that you can, mixing areas that you can use. And I love that. I just, uh, just wasn't happy with the, the way, the durability of this one. So I do like the idea that there's three mixing palettes. There's other brands out there that you might find that has the three mixing areas. But the one drawback that I found besides that is when you have your paints on both sides and um, you put your lid on it and you take it with you, there is always, always paint that pops out and falls into your palette. So I've discovered that personally, I don't like a palette that has mixing wells on both sides either. So that's something that's just a personal preference, but they seem to pop out more when they're because no matter how you lay it, there's going to be one that's upside down. So that is, this is one for you to see. Some of the features are great. Some of them are not quite as exciting as you think they would be when you, when you buy it. So, so there's that palette. Um, one of the palettes that I really like, go ahead and just put this on here. One of the palettes that I really like, this is for plain air. This is an Eldon John palette, and this is um, a palette that I use when I go do plain air painting. And the reason I like it is because of the wells. In each area, you can mix your colors and you can get a lot of water in there, and they're separated into three sections. So I really, really like that. The uh, drawback on this palette is that it um, doesn't have a lid. So it's a little harder to take with you if you're going out, but it is a great for mixing. If you, if you tend to paint with a lot of water, this is a great palette. I have two palettes. I bought two of them, one's cool and one are warm colors. They are stackable, so that helps, but these would be nice if there was a lid to this one. The next palette is um, this palette made by Fine Art. There's a variety of different companies that make this style. And I really like this one. This one has um, 36 wells in a lot of a lot of paint area and a nice big mixing area. And I like it because all the paint is just on one side and it's narrow, so I can lay this flat in the bottom of my bag, or I can lean it up. But um, this is a great palette. This is a palette I've used for years, and I really really like it. You can see that my palette is dirty. Just so you know, I, most of my palettes are dirty because I like um, leaving my paints that I'm finishing, I finished up with and mixing up, up together to get in neutral. So I never really clean my paint palette very much unless I just need a, a new space. Anyway, so this is, this is a great palette. I do really, really like this palette. The next palette, which is my, my all-time favorite, is this one. It's the same size as the last one but this one has a little bit more mixing area. So instead of three full rolls of paint, it has a two small areas for mixing. And I tend to um, like a few areas that I can keep separated from, uh, from the other areas. So this is, this is my favorite palette. I, th I think this is a great palette. 
because um, I still have the mixing area here and then I have these two mixing areas. Now I just want to point out, if you get a palette that is made out of plastic like these, when you start mixing your colors, oftentimes they will beat up on it and it just it drives you crazy because they don't want to mix together. So I've taken an extra, extra fine sandpaper and I've sanded the palette itself in these sections as well. So when I start mixing it, um, they don't beat up. So that's another thing that will help you with your palette if you get a plastic one. So this, this is probably my favorite palette that I've had. The next palette is a smaller palette. And this is great if you're going to a workshop or a class or something. It's, it's nice to have something at least this size. This has a section that you can lift out as well. And it has the two mixing areas. It just doesn't have quite as many wells for the paint. But I, I do like it. It gives you some mixing areas and gives you some um, nice wells. But I just prefer something just a little bit bigger than this one. Now, if you're going to travel and you want to take something with you, but you don't want to take any of these that are bigger, there's a couple um, different travel palettes that I have that, that I really enjoy. This one is uh, a great palette because it is uh, foldable. So you actually can fold it out and you can mix in bo on both sides. And this one has quite a few uh, wells in it and they actually lift out so you can take and just um, pop these out. Let's see if I can pop one out here. So the little, these are called half pans and these uh, little half pans come separately um, with your palette and then you fill them with the paint you want and if you want to rearrange how you organize your palette then you can do that. So they just pop back in and snap underneath that little brace there. So this is a really ideal palette for if you're traveling. So I, I do enjoy this one as well. And the last palette that I have is a, a microscopic palette. <laughs> this is what I use when I just tuck in my purse or something if I just want to take something with me. This is made by Meaden, just a tiny little palette. And it gives you some mixing areas and then plenty of different colors to choose from so you can do your color mixing in this area. The one thing with this palette that I really like and with the other palette, it's, it's metal, so they're not, it's not going to break on you or crack on you if there's pressure on it. But on this small one, as you can see at the bottom, there's a ring here. So you can lift the ring out and slide your finger into that ring. And you can open it up and you can um, hold it when you're painting. So if you're traveling and you're having to paint on your lap or in a small area, you have access to hold this and then paint. So. So these are the different palettes that I've tried and uh, hopefully by looking at each one and seeing the things that I like or don't care for about them will help you decide which palette is best for you. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe below. And if you have any ideas or suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment below. Thanks for joining me today. See you next time.